CoolStuffInc.com is your home for everything Magic the Gathering. Need singles for constructed or kitchen table play? Looking to pick up some sealed product or the latest in Magic accessories? We've got you covered with our extensive live inventory. With free shipping on orders of $100 or more, a 25% buy list bonus, and our ever popular customer rewards program, CoolStuffInc.com is the place for all your Magic the Gathering needs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the quarterfinals of the Vintage Super League. I'm Cyrus CG, and I am here with Misha's workshop master, uh, Montolio. How's it going, Andy? Not too bad, Cyrus. How are you this evening? Doing well. I have, uh, I have certainly lost closer games than those games, but you know that's what's great about Vintage is it's like you, sometimes the workshop deck has this prison element. Sometimes they're turn threeing you with triple spears on the play. So it was... Uh, it was pretty cool to see, and that's what's great about this format, is even when you lose, at least you get to see your opponent do something sweet. And at least your deck doesn't take 20 minutes to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's my beat with PO, is it takes 20 minutes to, to waste you sometimes. But, you know, it's it, it's funny because, you know, it, I don't need to tell you, it's a really awful matchup for me, any which way you you slice it and you know i'm just sitting there i'm like okay there's a pretty good opener you know i've got the turn one lodestone i'm like if the lodestone gets forced i'm cooked but it's pretty good i got a second lodestone next turn and uh you know you just i'm sitting there and i'm just waiting for you you know it hit me with one of the two main deck circles recalls it's like a, a negative anticipation like i'm just waiting for you to i've got you i've got you oh yeah no i don't <laughs> yeah, that is so often how it works out is that the matchup's already pretty good, but you throw in some Hercules recalls and, and you have the Leyland of Sanctities in your sideboard, which I always thought was a really good addition. Whenever people tell me, you're like, well, how do I beat PO? And I tell them, well, you know, you have your Null Rods, you have your Witchbane Orbs, which is a, a hexproof artifact, but the problem is all of your hate gets hit by the same effects. So what's nice about Leyland of Sanctity is I have, I mean, I can't pay enough mana to repeal that most of the time, so I have to just kind of win with a Mentor or, or Karns or in my sideboard, so... It didn't, it didn't end up mattering those matches, but um, I, I like that tech. Well, I appreciate that. That was actually a nod to you, but it was more towards DPS than PO. Uh, you know, its main function, of course, is Hercules Recall, but when you're getting hit with uh, a very common play in DPS, which is a turn one duress or thought seize, uh, which main orb is just not functional. Like, you're, you're quite often getting it stripped from your hand. It's too slow. You're spending turns trying to cast it when I should be beating you down. So I give up a little bit of... Uh, uh, I guess attrition in my deck to some extent when you're drawing dead cards, but of course it's extremely powerful when one lands in your opening hand and you know you are protected from that discard. And okay, of course Hercules Recall being the main, like Hercules Recall and Null Rod is is a uh, a relatively solid soft lock. Yeah, it's definitely some some pretty cool tech. And yeah, I decided to go with the Paradoxical Outcome Storm uh, tonight, even though I think that I, I'm better at playing the Dark Petition Storm deck. I I really only started playing the Paradoxical deck when, for the VSL because I can only play DPS once. But it, it's just it's basically the same deck, but just much better. So it's it's hard when you're in the you're in the playoffs, you're you're vying for that spot to bring what I really feel is not a great deck. And and you showed what's great about Magic is you know if we just flipped a you know ro rolled a dice and say I'm gonna win four out of six rolls or whatever where I win the match because that's the mat the match is favored that way for me. But your deck is capable of powerful things. It's consistent. And I mean I had a great hand. I had turn one. Library of Alexandria on the draw with a Black Lotus, a Talarian Academy, some cantrips. And it didn't matter. I just lost. Yeah, and that's what's good about Magic is, is that you still have to play the games. It's like people always tell me, people sit down for me all the time. They're like, well, you're on Storm. I can't ever beat Storm. This matchup's unwinnable. But the thing is, we're still two people playing playing a match of Magic. So, All right. All right. So it looks like we're going to get down to the match. So, Cyrus, have you had a chance to take a look at this matchup at all? Uh, a, a little bit. I'm not so familiar with creature decks, and both of these decks are playing a lot of creatures. So I imagine the one that has creatures that are better against other creatures, like Tarmogoyf, 
uh, is going to be better than the deck that has cards like Lavinia, which is doesn't match up too well against the huge vanilla beater from Future Sight. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't put too much... Of course, I've looked at their list from my perspective, but I haven't actually given it any thought as to which one would be favored. But I think you make a good point that Tarmogoyf is far and away the biggest creature out of any other decks. So that that's probably something. Yeah, Andreas was not excited to play against this. And that's what's great about Jund, right? Is people say Jund isn't a deck, it's a it's a lifestyle. And I guess you can Jund in every format, even vintage. <laughs> All right, looks like we're going to get to the match. Get down to the match. All right. So how do you feel about these opening hands? Well, let's see here. So Andreas looks like he's got a pretty solid hand there. He's got the turn one death right, some early disruption in a misstep and a time lock, which seems pretty good. Um, but Andy's, Andy's hand isn't too shabby either. Yeah, so uh, Brassman, Andy Probasco, he has a pretty salt hand. It's very fair, though, and it's very slow. And that Null Rod isn't going to do much against these two Deathrite Shamans. Uh, and that's the thing about Andreas' deck, is it's five color it, and with, with like a strip mine. Uh, I don't know if he's playing, I think he's playing Wastelands, maybe. But it, the mana in this deck is really bad. So yeah, when you draw a Deathrite Shaman, it helps a lot. And he has two of them here. Uh, and, and has only one fetch land so far to eat with the Deathrite Shaman's ability, but Brassman has a fetch land of his own. So these Deathrites, I think, are going to be key to the matchup and gets a Lavinia totally. down. Which... Yeah, you're absolutely right, Cyrus. The, the Deathrites are a really important card here. Um, and this is a display of exactly why Lavinia is so bad in this match. You got yourself a, uh, a grizzly bear for a blue and a white, which is not very good here. Yeah, it's certainly not the most impressive it's ever been. And, you know, we see Andreas having virtually untapping with four mana on his turn two. And that's just such a huge tempo advantage. And he has a couple dead cards. He has Lavinia, Mental Misstep. But what's great about dead cards, like in the matchup that are creatures, is all like that Null Rod, which is going to effectively do nothing here in this game. The thing about Andreas' is, you know, dead card of Lavinia is it still attacks, it still blocks. And this Dark Confidant's going to get abrupt decayed, and, and, and Brassman is going to be so far behind now. But yep. this is not the fastest clock in the world, so we'll see. Yeah, I, I was with reference to the Mistups being dead cards, I, I mean, at least they can hit opposing Deathrite Shamans, right? Yeah, that's fair. There's not there's not Ancestral Recalls in Brassman's deck, but he does have Deathrite Shamans. I need to pull up these deck lists. So for those that yeah, are uh, huge same. vintage fans, uh, neither of these decks are extremely popular shall i say uh they're both kind of brews yeah non-mainstream and that so, was what was so hard for me about preparing for this is that i was like okay well i think when it comes down to it i'm gonna play a tendrils deck and, and montelio's gonna play a wor workshops deck but who what the heck are brassman and peterson gonna play and here we have it that they have what the heck oh uh, i i i hindsight's everything but i almost had a surprise for you it was sunday night and i was sitting there and i had something locked and loaded to send in and it was not mishra's workshop oh man yeah i mean i'm over here with nine dead cards in my sideboard i have nine cards in my sideboard that are coming in in zero matches tonight so that should be <laughs> not the way i would have preferred to build my list but we'll see yeah i mean i when when you've got stakes that are this high i don't i i think you've got a hedge on like some of the earlier rounds right like you've got a like i prepared for dredge you know, I'm like, it's not above these any of these guys to bring something like that. It would suck to show up and not be prepared, right? I did see that you 5 would with uh, Fate Tisha Dredge, which is actually what I had been testing for this event, which I thought was pretty oh, funny. Really? Yeah, oh, cool. that's, what I, that's what I thought I was going to bring. And then I went 2-3 in a league right before and, and went, went with PO. So, <laughs> yeah, so. I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure how good of a deck that is, but uh, it's super fun to play. I agree. So, so it looks so, like the Chandra is going to come down here. And so Chandra starts with how much loyalty? Four, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I think that this sounds is gonna right. be this is gonna be really hard for Andreas to manage this card here. And this is what was that's kind of hard about this this matchup from from 
from Andreas' side is that he had a really strong start. It's happened with four mana on turn two. But the yeah. thing about Jun decks in every format is that their cards are just Ooh. better than their opponents. Oh, and here's an Ancestral Recall that's a right good, at the time. That's a good card. Um, oh, Snapcaster wow. Ancestral. To, no, uh, Decay can hit that, right? So no, Abrupt Decay can hit Null Rod, but it, Decay hits permanence with three or less, so it cannot destroy Shaman. Three Shandra. or less. You gotta cut me some slack here, Cyrus. I don't cast uh, Abrupt Decay that often. <laughs> yeah, and it's not cast against you <laughs> often enough, I'm sure. It's a little hard to cast sometimes under all of the, the wastelands. Uh, I have cast that card many times in Legacy, but never in Vintage. But I suppose when you're playing five colors, anything is possible. Wow. So oh, okay, huge temple swing here. That was seven cards drawn between the the um the draw step and the six off the ancestral. Yeah, and just like that, Peterson's right back in this game. He has a planeswalker of his own, which can compete Jace the Mind Sculptor better than all. And the thing is that with the rules change, Chandra Torture Defiance is plus ability that deals two damage can no longer redirect damage to Planeswalkers. So currently, Brassman is unable to deal with this Jace the Mind Sculptor, which is going to come down next turn. Yeah, the that's Black just going to be... Does nothing. That is going to turn the game around huge, for sure. And these Null Rods, which I wonder why Brassman's playing Null Rods with me and you in this in this pod, but they're, they're really just doing nothing this game. But that's what's nice about Chandra's ability is it still goes two to the dome. And here we have a new card, uh, I believe from the newest set, Cinder Vines. Cinder Vines, yeah. So for those at home that don't know this card, it's a red and a green for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, Cinder Vines deals one damage to that player. And you can pay one mana, sacrifice it, and destroy target artifact or enchantment. Cinder Vines then deals two damage to that permanent's controller. So you're not able to redirect to the Planeswalkers. So again, the Jace can be hard to deal with. And the Snapcaster not only flashback Ancestral Recall, but is going to be able to take Chandra Torture Defiance off the table. And just when I thought Peterson was too far behind to come back in this game, and such a recall pushes him way far ahead. Yeah, this this game, for all intents and purposes, is now over. With Once Jace hits the table here, it's uh, with Andy having a Black Lotus in hand, this game is over. Well. Oh, man. Uh, and then we have Jack Cadence. Yeah, just yeah I think so. this is going to be too hard. There's no Blood Braid else or anything similar to really immediately get... get uh, Brassman back in the game. That's kind of problem with this version of Jund is it, it does, it's two for ones are Dark Confidant and Chandra. So an Ancient Grudge to an extent, which is not at all two for one, but it doesn't have things like Colgon's Command. It doesn't have Blood Raid up. It doesn't have the Jund cards that we see in other formats that really let you pull pull ahead. It's more just trying to play generically good cards that one for one. Yeah, I actually think, uh, I mean, obviously the way Andy has, uh, the Brassman has built his list, it's not conducive to running something like Blood, Blood Braid, but uh, I think Blood Braid could be vintage viable if you build your deck right. Like, you can't run things like Mental Misstep in it, but... Yeah, uh, so what's tough is you want the mana to accelerate out Blood Braid, and then you, you cascade into the mana, but he's not playing that much mana in his deck, and, and you know, I, I, I think that this Jun deck, which Matt Murray... Uh, uh, it was why the deck is called Chubby Jund, because Matt Murray is known as Chubby Rain, has been working a lot on this deck. And I think that there's a lot of room for this deck to be innovated. So any vintage fans at home that love playing Jund maybe would want to check it out. So yeah, now you have the combination of Leovold plus Dak Faden. So what Andreas could do if he wanted is target Brassman. And Brassman would still draw one card because it's you know he hasn't drawn a card yet for turn. But then you'd have to discard two. So... Brassman is effectively locked out of the game because of the combination of the the two thieves, if, if you will. Yeah, this uh, ooh, thought sees doesn't look very good there. Yeah, what a well, ancestor recall uh, recall is a card. Yeah, really showing the reason why you play blue cards in your your vintage deck, right? Jeez, that that was looking very grim for Andreas there for a minute. So Chandra came down and yeah, ancestral snap, ancestral just turn that game right around and that's the so, thing about these blue decks is their spells just cascade into each other like that so what do you think here cyrus does this swing in any player's favor in particular post board so looking at their sideboards i really don't feel really good about what Brassman has to bring and i think he feels that his deck is pretty well suited to defeat the the blue decks game one uh he has mental misstep which i think will come in and then Maybe a basic land. Imagine he has some bad cards. Uh, man, uh, but neither player is really bringing in very many cards. They're kind of set up with a lot of artifact 
and a lot of graveyard hate in their sideboard, which is kind of how these fair decks tend to operate in like era vintage when they're not abusing the graveyard or abusing artifacts. Most of their so, cards tend to be stop decks that do. Let me ask you this, Cyrus. How much value is there in Andreas bringing in Leyline of the Void to turn off uh, Tarmogoyce and uh, neuter the Death Right Shamans to some extent? I mean, Tarmogoyce is as, is as big as kill threat here. It's tough. You have to see what he's able to bring out because the Tarmogoyce still counts Andreas's graveyard and they're both playing Death Right Shaman. But I think it could be reasonable if you have enough bad cards. Uh, but looks like Andreas opted not to do so. But I, I that was a thought that crossed my mind too. Because I, I mean, when I'm looking across the board at a Andy's deck list here, the one card that scares me is Tarmogoyf. I'm not saying it's correct to put the ley lines in, but it's uh, it, it does have some value here for sure. So yeah. this misstep uh, is not going to get this done here, or it will get it done, but not from Andreas' side. So now the only format that Death Rite Shaman is legal is a four of in Vintage, really showcasing his power. Where, where's the bolt off the top? So you have an wow. interesting decision here. Do you bolt the Death Rite or do you play your own? Oh, it looks like he's it. opting to bolt, yeah. Just get that thing gone. Bolt the bird. It's a saying for a reason, right? It's been true since Alpha and it's true today. But having said that, I mean, we're obviously looking at hands here, but uh, there is some merit to holding that bolt. And, uh, you know, trying to plunk off a Tarmogoyf, right? If you play the Death Right Shaman first, you can shrink the yard, potentially. Wow, what a draw. That Mox Sapphire is probably the, one of the best possible draws here, allowing him to deploy Dark Confidant right when Brass, or Brassman takes his turn to Wasteland him, so rather than play Tarmogoyf. And now, because the Wasteland, Brassman is pretty far away from casting these Chandras, so this, yep. this Dark Confidant might just run away with the game with a timely Spell Pierce to take care of Chandra, but... Or the, but sorry, the Dark Confidant might run with the game, but... You know, pretty soon Andreas right. needs to find an abrupt decay to answer this Tarmogoyf. I was going to say, he's going to need to deal with that Tarmogoyf pretty quickly because he can just bring in a Cinder Vines here, blow up Andreas's mocks, and then he gets that extra plus one, plus one from the enchantment. It's not not irrelevant here. And the artifact. We've added an enchantment and an yeah, artifact for sure. to the graveyard. Yeah. So. All right, Dak Fanny coming down here. We're going to start digging for not only abrupt decay, but the mana to cast abrupt decay, which is one issue with Andreas's deck. Well, there's the mana. I imagine this Lavinia is going to disappear. It doesn't seem very powerful here. And I think you can yep. probably get rid of a land. So that... Yep, for sure. I would keep the fetch personally. Yeah. Well, I think he's going to play Death right here anyway, so that the trop does basically the yep. same. True, true. But yeah, uh, he's not. Oh, is he... he? Well, he has a land drop left, right? Yep. Yeah. Is he running Treasure Cruise or Dig, Andreas? I didn't see those cards. I only saw Ancestral and Time Walk and then Demonic okay. Tutor to find them. But of course there's not. No... He's, got... He's running Dark Confident. Of course not. <laughs> well, <laughs> you would say that, but I mean, I, I don't know how many games I've won from Dark Confident flipping Blightsteel Colossus and, or Force of Will or Treasure Cruise. It's definitely a, a non zero number. I'll say that. Well, I, I mean, the Blightsteel Colossus is a whole different beast, right? That's uh, um, That wins you the game on the spot. So that's a worthy gamble. Yeah, and an interesting th thing, no one played Blightsteel Colossus uh, tonight, but both of these players watching right now have the new card Infernal Reckoning from Corset 2019 in their in their cyber, which is a black mana instant, exile target colors creature, you gain life equal to its power, which is a pretty interesting addition uh, to Vintage. I didn't, hasn't seen much play, but it's good against Eldrazi, it's good against Blightsteel, it's good against Workshops, so uh, Blightsteel would have not lined up very well against that card tonight. So... Here is an interesting scenario for Andreas. He could he could Vampiric Tutor here, draw what card he, he vamps for off Dak and cast it. Um, so he could go and find himself a Jace the Mind Sculptor potentially for next turn. He could find an Ancestral. And does he hold on to the Spell Pierce for the exact scenario you spoke about earlier, trying to snipe one of those Chandras? Yeah, you have to think about how he feels Brassman can get back into this game. And it feels like a powerful Planeswalker like Chandra is really what it's going to be. Although the Tarmogoyf is is plucking away. So I think what uh, I would do is I would wait okay. to see what Brassman does. If you need a Spell Pierce or Force something, you can. And then if, if, if you still have your lands, you don't get Wastelanded, what you can do is you can Vampiric Tutor for an Abrupt Decay, take care of this Tarmogoyf, and be back mm. in the game. 
Um, or you could just Vampiric for Ancestral Recall and hope that draws you to Rep Decay. I mean, you usually can't go wrong with drawing three cards, but sometimes you don't have the opportunity to do so. And also, Vampiric Tutor is going to set up this Dark Confidant to take the exact amount of damage that he wants to take off of this Dark Confidant. Um, right, you don't, that way you're not flipping one of your more expensive cards like Jace to it next turn on accident. Yeah. So let's see here. What is that? Is that Tarmogoyf? I can't see. Is it a four or five? I think it's a five, six is what the Cinder Vines destroying the Mox Ruby did there. Is that with that play we talked about earlier where you can grow it. Wow. So I That's... think that what Peterson's going to do here is spell pierce the Chandra and vamp for decay. But yeah, I agree it's with gonna you. It's going to be bad against the next Chandra. Yeah. No, he does have Dark Confident doing some work for him here. Certainly. So he can find his way out. If he can find a blue card here, Chandra is not going to be likely much of a problem. Well, he... Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, Cyrus. I, I, given the board state here, I think I would go and get an Abrupt Decay. Yeah, you just can't be afford to be taking five a turn when there's a, a Dark Confidant in play on your side. And you have to hope that your opponent has one card in hand. You put each other basically in a top deck war, but you have a Dark Confidant, and that would be able to outvalue your opponent's superior spells yeah he's at 10 now so okay yeah, he found his blue, blue card. card yep so he's firmly in command here now now here's the question can he race his own dark confidant that's <laughs> he's gonna be taking one from the force of will and you know i, I think nine life is gonna be enough to play with Ooh. i was just gonna say is he gonna th is he gonna thought seize here is he gonna be greedy yeah yeah i don't think you can afford a thought seize here but it is definitely an interesting proposition. Yeah. All right, take zero. Those are a couple bricks there. Man, there's like a lot of pedal in Peterson's deck. <laughs> he, I guess he didn't want to run all five, five moxes. He wanted to rock, run four and uh, Lotus Petal. Anything to fix your mana, I suppose. All right, there's a Wasteland, which isn't the best card here. and. You know, in these attrition-based matchups where both people are playing Dark Confidant, it just untapping with one is so big. And Andreas has done that multiple times. Yeah. It looks like uh, on... Ooh. Well, you never know. I mean, a Tarmogoyf here... If, if Andreas can't find his other Abrupt Decay or his Snapcaster Mage, a Tarmogoyf could, could lock this up. So it's going to be interesting. Absolutely. Uh, Andreas has had quite a, a poor set of draws off the top of his library, but at nine life, he should be able to close this out. Yeah, I, I think Andreas is going to get here. And this is what's interesting about Vintage is we kind of showcase the different things that can happen. You know, our, our game, you had a pretty fast clock against the combo deck, and you're playing like an aggro tempo lock piece deck. I'm playing a combo deck. And then over here, we have an attrition based matchup. And people always tell me, like, oh, when I think of Vintage, I think of turn one kills, I think of Dredge, I think of. I think of uh, Mishra's Workshop, but there's also this type of game too, where you're just kind of vying back and forth, trying to use resources as much as possible. So that is a desperation dark confident if I've ever seen one. Um, that is dangerous. Ooh, is he ever lucky that he didn't hit that force of will first? Yeah, <laughs> which is really the real concern here. It's not great putting five drops and dark in your deck. So. Yeah, I think yeah. that, that Brassman just has to block here, even though he knows another Dark Confidant is coming. It's kind of an interesting point where, I guess it doesn't really matter because you have to block next turn, so you just have to block this turn because you know, your opponent can draw a removal spell. And he can hard cast a force here, yeah? Yeah, looks like it, as long as he has enough fetchable lands left in his deck, which I imagine he does with 16 lands. Oh, look at this. Holy catfish. I was going to say, he's got to pay three life here to do this. He, he's putting himself in peril for sure. This could come down to one draw step. He has a lot of cards left in his deck that kill that, that win the game here. So, a Jace yeah, the Mind Sculptor is going to is going is going to kill him, and a Force of Will is going to do it. Those are the two cards I'm seeing that just end the game on the spot. So, it's it's going to come down to a pretty exciting. And that's one concern for putting Leyline of the Void in your deck is it adds a lot more cards for Dark Confidant. All right, let's see. Ah. Oh, down to three. <laughs> Death Rite's actually really good here because he can gain life on the upkeep. Yeah, but that's, there's a mental that's... misstep. Oh, he can't mental misstep because he's at two life. Yeah, Death Rite can also just end the game on the upkeep. So well, I think true. it looks like Peterson's going to get this one unless Brassman can top deck a removal spell right now. He doesn't. So 
Wow, that was a really interesting sequence. Yeah, what a nail biter. I mean, it, even with untapping with a dark confidant, you know, half a dozen times, it was still ended up being really close. Yeah, I felt like Andrea should have been able to put that away relatively easily, but it, I, I felt like he drew five or six lands, uh, you know, plus moxes there off that dark confidant two or three turns in a row, and uh, just couldn't get there. Yeah, what wasn't quite how how he drew it up, but it was good enough. I mean, the thing about magic is. Even when you're drawing all lands, if you're drawing two cards a turn, you're drawing two cards a turn. So up next, it looks like we have you against Andreas. So that should be interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm i not sure what I think of that matchup. It's, uh, you know, certainly he's got some hateful stuff in the the sideboard there with the four energy fluxes and the, uh, the Infernal Reckoning. So, um, but yeah, I think the key to this match for me is going to be, we, we discussed a little bit earlier, I really have to go after those Deathrite Shamans in the beginning and try and hobble them on lands. Uh, his deck is quite greedy to cast his spells. And, you know, so that's the, that's the way I'm going to approach this match here. And, um, you know, obviously going to get a lot more tricky with energy fluxes. But... All right, yeah, so good luck, Andy. It looks like we're going to cut to ads now, and then we'll be back uh, watching your match. So good luck.